leave us there alone sometimes. You know, we like somebody from the, um, who deal with a prison to, to, to come into a meeting with whatever committee it is. Because I don't like how they sit up here in St. Thomas. I don't think it's, it's good at all. I, I don't like it. Um, is that not fit for anything to, to produce anything? It's just want to appease you or something like that. One of the things that we've been doing is groundwork. This um, Monday, the new director, Director Mulgrave, and the new warden, Warden Trotter, allowed us to come in to St. Croix and take a tour of the prison. Um, they also offered for us to be here to do it here in St. Thomas. Um, unfortunately, when I told them I was coming to St. Thomas on Wednesday, they said Wednesday, but I told them because of the way I was booked. And then when I get back, I have some other meetings. I told them I'd not be able to do it. So they said for me to give them a date. So I come here to asking you, letting you know this, asking you when can we have a date now I'll tell you something. I'm new to the Virgin Islands. This year, August, will be my sixth year living here in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix. And I am somebody, when I live in a place, I need to find out all that I can about that place. I have some friends who live here in St. Thomas, so I used to visit St. Thomas quite a bit. And the problem for me is, the more I try to find out about the prison systems here, is the more I couldn't find out anything. Nobody's willing to talk. So, the driver for 733V, Cherokee? Yeah. So, can you tell me? Also, I, like I said, I'm a Googler, so I Google everything. So I had to Google for me to find out what are the prisons in um, the Virgin Islands. I found out about BOC, and I found out about what they call a holding cell here in St. Thomas. Can you educate me as to the prison or prisons you have here? Like, what, what's it about, Pastor Bentley? In the first place, um, in terms of place to a place to meet, it's very limited. And those of us who participate in the prison ministry, we we go along with whatever is available. I heard the brother say he got four mental patients. Well, I'm glad to have that because we need, we know we got to do. So we tell them what we have, what we come for. You'd be surprised to know the response of those patients, you know. Because when you go there, many of them are on the medication, so they're talking properly. So you can tell them stuff that would be good. But um, they don't have adequate, in mean, St. Croix, it's better. They have a, a chapel, because they've got a bigger campus. And you can go to the chapel. See the chapel. You didn't know that? There's I, didn't see, I, I went on a tour on Monday, and they didn't show me a chapel. There's a, place, <laughs> there's a place that they have for a chapel okay. where they meet for services. Okay. We don't have the kind of property here. As a matter of fact, what we have here is just a jail and not a prison. Yes. A jail is designed to house people awaiting the trial right. or those who are serving time that does not exceed more than two years. Yeah. You know, But the prison, of course, the hard core people and they keep over there. St. Croix is used both as a jail and a prison because that's all we got. But we're very limited, uh, but we're happy when people can come. Now, I hear about the committee and at the same time you have to let each religion each has, must, must have access to go there because you got all kinds of people in, in prison some who don't want to hear anything about the Bible, because they have their own religion, and each person that represents a religion can go in there to meet their people. Like the other day, I had to go find and, and 
what you call them, the imam for the, for the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Because we had a Muslim there who didn't want to see anybody else but his imam. Mm -hmm. Finally, we got that. But these are the kinds of things you have to do. And um, heretofore, they've been having some serious problems with, with staffing because they didn't have enough officers. Yeah. So you go to do your ministry, and sometimes there are only two officers on duty. So when two officers on duty, they certainly can't entertain any group coming in there because in case anything happens. So that's a security measure. That's what, and that went on for a long time. Now it's getting, it should be better now because they've closed the annex down the airport. They closed that. I'm sure you read how they shipped out a lot of inmates to Arizona and Florida the other day to minimize the, the, the amount they have and to be in in sync with the pressure coming from the ACLU and um, the consent decree that uh, both the police and the prison yeah. have to comply with. So it should, should be getting a little better because now you have more officers and they recruited some mm -hmm. at the one station and all we need to know is to set the timing for those who want to come yeah. at different times. Okay. And don't get frustrated, brother, when they tell you you got to go back because uh, they know more about the security measures than we know, and they have to do that for security purposes. Now, some, I must admit, though, some, some of these officers just don't care about God either. That you have to let them, you know, don't be antagonistic towards that. That will be dealt with, you know, in time. Yeah. Well, so these are the things that we go through. I've been with them over 45 years, so I, I know the kind of things that we go through, you know. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. What, what I'm saying, I, I, I fully well aware understand what you're saying, but now if we're going to form a committee here, we have to have some kind of influence. Some, at least from the governor's office. I'm not, I understand exactly what you're saying. You share with us the problems that exist in that place. If we are going to transform lives in the prison. Um, we can't do it the way we are doing it. We got to tell the government they could create space. This this is ridiculous to go down there in a particular place. If you say I must have four mentally ill patient, is that the mentally ill patient causing all this rupture in the place? Is the guys who stinking straight? So we are saying we just not only want to get some mentally guys when to come into church or into any other programs we have. We want to be there at a particular time, and it was, I think it's rude. How could I have been coming over like some 10 years in prison, and one day I show up, and you tell me that you put, a, put the gym on my particular time. We don't even have the manners or respect to say that this is what is happening till I question the whole thing. Not only that, we got to pressure the government. You have the finest space, and if you want to do academics, if you want to share lecturing with the youngsters, there's a good environment there. This whole, whole big police place down there, they, they don't have extra, all downstairs and so they have extra rooms about the place. Or no, we, then we find something of the prison. They take them to the hospital, right? Some building around that area, they're close. Bring them down into an, an environment, a proper environment for us. We should not accept it as a church. As a Christian community, we should not accept what, they, what they're dishing out there. We should protest this thing. Not, 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 not saying about uh, um, how they're doing it now is acceptable. It's unacceptable. And if, we, if I'm going to be on a committee dealing with that, I'm going to protest to the, govern, the governor that it's accept, un, un, unacceptable, to the Senate is unacceptable, and to the, those who run that system is unacceptable. It's a, it's a joke. I think we're missing something here. We're missing something here. Number one. You cannot get an inmate to come to your class if they don't want to come. And most of the time, that's the problem. I'm not saying that. But I'm only saying that that has to be a part of the equation so you can cool your temper down a little no, bit. No, no, no. It is not. Let me finish. That's it, not the problem. The problem is we need an environment that we are able to cultivate something. Whether it is one person or 100 person, we are, we are changing. The, the environment, there's no and conducive environment, there's no conducive environment 
for us to sit down with anybody to do anything constructive as a group. We need to tell them we need to have a place that is conducive for some kind of inter interaction. Well, let me just say some of the problems that possibly would help you. The other problem is the Bureau has to make sure that inmates who are coming to any gathering don't have any beef with each other, otherwise we have chaos in the jail. So they have to secure that. It's a matter of security. The whole thing is a matter of security. And not even the governor could demand anything other than what security says. It goes here you know, because security is important. And if you don't have the facility, that's the problem. And to move inmates from one place to another, that's a bigger problem. You cannot move them along, you know, without having the proper security. So it's a matter of security. So when we go there, what I'd like us to do is to be thankful that we're able to at least go there and make contact with some people. You can't demand anything. Because if you demand, they have a right to just shut down everything and say well, you can't come. I... Okay, all right. I'm t I've been only there 45 years. Yeah. <laughs> Can, can you? Yeah. Can you? Brother, can you, be careful you? to say that. They, they have the authority. If, if the system determines, yeah. I'm, you're not listening. If the okay. system determines Just that there now, is a, wait, wait, if there's let's, a problem. Let's, let's let my oh, well, system, let me say the last statement. Yeah. If the system determines that there is a security problem, they can shut the whole place down. Yeah, I, I, will, I will address that. Can you let my sister? Thank you. Good afternoon. Can you tell me your name, please? Your name? My name is Juliet Francis Creel, okay. and I am the executive director for Prison Fellowship United States Virgin Islands, right. which most of the pastors do not even ignore. I mean, they do. Uh, one of the, our greatest problems, if we're speaking in terms of ministering to the prisoners in the Department of Bureau of Correction, we have to work together. Yeah. Our greatest problem is that you're you being the head of this the group, you need to get all the people together. Prison Fellowship would always assist you because we've done training with you in the little spaces that they have. We've made it available. But we are unable to have the churches come together who are ministering in the prison. Number one. We have always had EC ESL and all of those classes. The new group that started about three years ago asked us to leave the prison. We were, we were doing these classes down at Swan. And so they felt that they didn't have enough personnel each and every day in our little library that we had there. The men came. We didn't have a problem with them. But uh, we have to go abide by corrections. They asked us to leave, and we left. They said they would send a letter to us. They never did. But we've been in contact with the director. And for co corrections, you must begin with the director. Yes. You can go to the government if you want to, but they're going to send you to the director. director. So we director. follow procedures. That's one of the things that I found. Everyone who comes to visit, they want to come, and they want to give the word, which is wonderful but you have to follow procedure. Our first procedure is, even if you're scheduled at seven o'clock on Thursday, call before you come. It will save you a lot of aggravation. If it's raining and you're upstairs at the jail, don't go, because upstairs is soaking wet. You know that. It's an open area, okay? So there are a lot of things that are available, but we have to come together as a church, and then we'll come together as a community and we can sit and see exactly what's needed. Yeah. We ha there are many areas, many grants and everything that's available to us. I spoke with, with Mr. Christian and we've, he comes to our board meetings whenever he can. It can be done, but we have to follow procedure and that's one of the greatest things yeah. that I see missing. Thank you. Yeah. And, and like I said before, the director and the warden, they are trying to work with us, but at the end of the day, they have to ensure our safety. 
Can you identify? Yeah. Okay, my name is uh, Rudy Hedrington. And I agree what most of these are pastors, pastors yeah. are saying. Uh, I'm a retired correction officer. And I must say, the first thing that the Bureau is looking after is security. Yeah. On my tour of duty, there were other one of the security officers there. Staffing have always been a problem. Yeah. But security come first in the prison. Whether you have visitors or not security among the other inmates. Somebody mentioned something about somebody having a beef with others. That's one security area that we have to look at. When you have visitors coming in, whether it's the ministry or we have visitors coming, at one point it used to be contact visit. That was a very tense situation when you have people coming into the institution and actually making contact with the person there. People were smuggling dope within the food, within drinks and different alcohol beverages were bringing in. So when it comes to that institution, security is on the top level. Keep in mind also that the understaff I heard I'm talking about recently about pay. The officers also are underpaid. Uh, when the prison system was built, I don't think they had in mind of having like a, ch a chapel uh, or era sec more secure that the German, I think the pastor was talking about, that the church could come. I don't think that was really in mind. So do they have, right now how the building is built, it's not really secure for that purpose. But we try our best when the different churches are coming. I have been there for quite a while now, so I don't know what is, how they're conducting it now. But usually they have officers there, and they also have cameras there. For anything that happened at that particular time, they can, every officer will respond, they will secure the area, wherever they're working, every area, every sec officer in that institution will respond. We, we try to accommodate anybody coming there, any of the church coming there to enter the institution. But like I'm saying, uh, security is the top of the level there. The other concern, I'm, uh, Pastor Bentley, I've worked there when he came to the um, institution. Keep in mind also, we're talking about some of the inmates that are always scheming. You may have inmates coming there to the service not because they want to get the word. They have a beef with somebody else they know is coming. So we have to be aware of that also. We had a young man there, and I'm going to call his name. He was there to ev just about every service that uh, were coming to the, the uh, institution. He was even given privilege to go out to worship. There was an agenda. When he got out, just about a couple of days after he got out, he went to the mainland because he didn't, he wasn't really uh, conform or conform. Okay, uh, he got into something up there stateside, and he was shot dead, dead. But what I'm trying to say, security is the key, key there. And when the institution was built, how it is right now. As the, the pastor was saying, uh, to be more conducive as to having that service, yeah. we keep in mind that it wasn't built that way. We have to find some way secure now for their safety and anybody's coming into, into, into the institution. So safety yeah. is at the top level there. Yeah. And I wasn't aware when you mentioned the annex was closed. I, I know the prisoner was, went to the mainland, but I wasn't aware of that. Okay. So yeah, thank, thank you. you for that. Um, Ms. Grill said something that was very important, and that is what we're trying to do here today. We're trying to establish a committee so that we can work together wherein we can go into the prison. You see, when I meet with the director again, I need to be able to say, okay, 
These are the committees that we have in St. Thomas and in St. Croix. These are the folks who will be coming in. These are the things that we'll be able to offer to the inmates. Okay, so having said that, and rounding up, because I, I really appreciate that you left, um, I really appreciate that you left your job, and I know I have to let you get back. But I'm going to round up now. I need a head, an assistant, and a secretary, please. So that, and, and then also a date that we can reconvene for us to figure out how can we go into the, um, okay, so a part but not the head. <laughs> Not the head. The assistant? No. Secretary? Just a part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I always want to try and get you to be doing something. Okay, anybody else? Pastor Bentley? I was going to suggest that since we have the prison ministry already, led by this lady and have a, a committee formed. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel, but ask people to work through the committee. Yeah, that, and that, is, that is one of the things we've been so saying that, here today. Yes, so that we can do more. Yes. You know, hear more. About, so when you call a meeting, you send letters out to all of us so that we can be attending the meeting. But she's already, they're already functioning. How do you they, feel about that? That's more work. No, because if you got people working with you, you see less work. Yes. So we've been in, since 2002. We've been trying to gather everyone together. It's well, not that they don't respond. Well, let's do it. You let's, know, now and again. Let's carry on from now. So, you, are you willing? <laughs> for us? I'm always willing till okay. I stretch out. I'm willing. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, you know, I wanted to say something to you. Yes. In reference to what. Um, the gentleman Mr. said, Hengington. Um, you know, uh, we same sort of thing we had at the prison in St. Croix. We were able to get all of the community to come together with us. And we asked the, um, at that time, the director at that time to assign us a building that was broken down. Do you remember? We actually built a chapel that they had oh, never had. Okay. So it's not that these things are not... Of, you know, Plausible. in mine, yeah. we're going to put them out into God's atmosphere. Okay. And the things that we want to do, we can get them done. I have a okay. question for you. When is your next meeting? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> the next time we meet. <laughs> okay. Because so I then send out meetings and I send out... So meetings, can we organize a time right now? And then at least those of us who are here, at least you'll have us at your meeting. Yeah. The same so right date, now we same, we doing the same day. We're doing Thursday, April seventh. So you'll have any time from two o'clock. Okay, two that's wonderful for me. Sounds wonderful. good, Pastor. I was saying that she's also involved in the Christmas tree, and we're involved in that. That's part of it. Oh, you do the, every, the um every December she every, sends it around to the churches, ah. and we are part of it. We buy gifts. Go to their homes, pray with the family, with uh, folks who are in prison, incarcerated, and we take gifts to them, have a little service yeah. with them, pray with them, and make the kids happy. I like that because I'll tell you something. Another aspect that we'll be doing, um, you, you, you see, okay, we had the luncheon, and that one was to get all the religious um, folks on board. Another aspect we're doing with the early childhood comprehensive system is that April and May, March, April and May, we're going into the prison systems. And right about now, April 24th in St. Croix, we'll be having what we call um, a kite flying day for the children of the incarcerated. And that was hinged on, you know, the, the Christmas tree thing that they do at, um, at Christmas time. That was hinge on that. So I would really like to meet with the committee so that we can get it done for here in St. Thomas. 
Let, let, let me add to this, please. Yeah. That, um, please do. It's not just the, the, it's not just going and preaching no. the gospel, but we gotta get the families know the families help their wives help their when children. When we go in, let me correct you. When we go in, we're not going in to teach the gospel just yet. We're going in right to address the needs that they have, such as education. Okay, because. We need to be able to educate them for them to be able to educate their children. The way our synopsis read is also to ensure that there's not a re-entry. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of them re-enter simply because when I come out, I didn't know where to go. I was so confused. Right? So now we need to also be able to, in, in the Reformation, be able to reintegrate them into society. So that is how we're going in. We're not going in with ministering unto them. That's why we have all these different churches. You know, if I am Baptist and you are Seventh-day Adventist, I will tell you, no, your right day is a Sunday. And the Seventh-day Adventist will say, no, we're not, we're not, no, no, no. that's it, not what we're touching. For that. It's designed for that. The right? program is designed for that. The committee that we're establishing. Is, is designed for that. But the point right, but that's not, that's not what we're doing. We're going in to re-educate for re-entry and reintegration into society. Well, that's forget, what we're the, going for. The gospel for. is about the re-education now, so let me just make that clear. Yeah. The gospel is a part of the re-education. Now, what I'm saying is that we need to show interest also in family outside that need a lot of help. Are these children of the inmates need help? Yes. We gotta show interest in trying to get businesses yes. interested yes. to employ inmates when they come right. out. Right. And there's some programs going on in the prison itself that is they're preparing yes. them for this. Right. Oh so we got a rigid program. But oh, we're yes. saying we must be open to all of this. Oh so yeah. We can do the yeah because I mean, I mean I mean if somebody is truly repentive, then, you know, they'll come to a pastor and they'll want, they'll ask you for certain things. We're not saying no, but we want to provide them an education to ensure that they don't come back into the prison system. Because um, one of the things that I found out on Monday is that 80% of the prisoners that they have, and that includes those who were sent overseas, this is maybe like the second and third and fourth time and up into uh, coming back. Yeah. Yes. Um, good afternoon. Name, name please. Uh, Clarence Payne, former Senator Clarence Payne. Oh, Clarence. Um, I know Miss Grio for many years, and her and I used to work on a Virgin Islands prison project. And yeah. if the pastors here don't mind, I would like to volunteer to work with Miss Grio as her assistant. If, if that's available, which you, you know, pastors here. Yes, I'll be more than glad to be a, as assistant to Mr. Grio if the pastors see that's, that's, that being okay. We have Thanks. a sign-in sheet. If you could sign in, that would be awesome. <laughs> yes, I, I, have, I, had, I had all the different sheets for... But thanks to Seaborn, I was so late. So you could even go here if you want. Yes. Thank you, honey. Okay, so I'm rounding up now for us to close off. Let me, let me just take it from the top again. And like I said, I was taking notes, so we'll send out a comprehensive email with all this information on it, basically covering... Um, the minutes of each meeting and the meeting times and what have you. So homeless, well, every day will every meeting will be Thursday, April seventh. Homeless will be at ten a.m. Um, after school will be at twelve p.m. and prison ministry or incarcerated will be at two p.m. It will be at the St. Paul's Church. Excuse me, does everyone know where St. Paul Baptist Church is? No. Um, <laughs> Okay. I will need you when I send out that email okay. because I and please make sure that your email is on the um, yes. sign in sheet. Okay. I will need you to, you could probably even do me a favor uh -huh. and on the sign in sheet or even afterwards see me and give me your name and make sure I know that okay. you're the one for St. Paul's That's Church. Fine. Okay, good. And then 
we can make sure that we okay. make it happen. Well, let, let me just mention briefly because most people from St. Thomas kind of acquainted with the Anna's Retreat area, okay. the basketball court on the hill up here, next to the center where Weed and Seed program is. That's where the police department should have been. Yeah. We're right above that, okay? Oh, I know A two-story building on the hill. So you can be right above the basketball I court. You don't know that. <laughs> I, I actually know You him. do? Okay. Yeah, because I'm just thinking where my friends took me when I came here. Is that right? So I think I actually know. Like, I'm listening to you, and I'm like, okay. I know where that police. Right above yeah. the basketball court. Can you take That's one where of we are. Let me have that first one, please. Thank you. Okay, to close off, um, like I said, I'm the Early Childhood Comprehensive Systems Program Coordinator, and we're bringing what we call a scream-free parenting training to the Virgin Islands. This is costing us a lot of money. We were trying to get it done on both islands, and it was just too much. It is easier for us to be able to pay um, the tickets for 10 of you coming from St. Uh, Thomas and St. John to come over to St. Croix than it is for us to have had training on both islands. So <clears throat> having said that, you'll see a flyer. I need five more folks from St. Thomas slash St. John to be trained. Like I said, we will be the one footing the bill for the, um, the Seaborn. And I'm actually trying to get us to foot the bill for you to be able to overnight, okay? No promises on that one, I'm still working on it. <laughs> so if you're interested, please shoot me a, a text, I work better that way. Take my phone number down, it's not a 340. My phone number, cell phone is 484-663-1966. I need five more folks. The first five I get, that's who I'm going with. 484-663-1974. Shoot me a text with your name, your affiliation, um, your name, your affiliation, and your date of birth. Because like I said, the first five I get, that's who I'm going with. Right, Pastor George? <laughs> And if you want to know, um, it actually gives you, let's say, like, if you have a degree already, you actually earn 14 hours of continuing education credits or units for either in um, counseling or social work, whichever area you're in. Um, you get a kit. The kit, the value of the kit is $300, $295, right? That's the value. You will be getting that kit for free. When you get that kit, that kit is already equipped for you to begin parenting training in your churches, in your schools, wherever it is you are, immediately. So as soon as you come to St. Croix, you receive their training, and they have a beautiful certificate that they give you with your name on it and everything. Yes, ma'am. Pardon? We only, oh, by the way, we're only doing one person per. I believe I still have one opening space for St. Croix. So, yes. Yes. You have my number? Okay. And I want to see you. I need, I need five more from St. Thomas, St. John. I need five more if you're from St. Thomas or St. John. I need five more if you know somebody from St. John. I need five more folks. Text me, 484, like I said, the first five I get, 484-663-1974. Text me, make sure, because I would, I would not have known who it's coming from, your name, your email address, your um, date of birth. Okay? And then... Um, Ms. Ms. Grio will talk about St. Croix because I believe I have one more space. I'm no, no promises, but I believe I have one more space. Pardon? Then let's have her. But no, we're not really doing it that way. We're, we're trying to get 10 folks from St. Croix 
St. Thomas, from St. Thomas, St. John, and 10 folks, yeah. That's how we're trying to do it. And I'm the 21st, I'm the 21st person. So we're doing 20. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. I would like somebody to pray to close us, please. Pastor Gladstone. Let's all stand, please. We want to thank you for coming over and, and being with us. And we hope we have a long relationship together. Give the others our love and sing Croy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for gathering today. Thank you for the uh, progress that was done here. And we pray that as we form teams or groups that we come together, that the community will become a better community because of us. Bless us as we leave this place. Take us to a different assignments and take our sister back home safely to St. Croix. Thank you for all you have done for us today and we give you all the praise, honor and glory in Jesus' name. Everyone says, Amen.